CataractCoach.com, do not upset the iris. Here's how it started, here's how it ended. Not that pretty. Let me show you this case. We're gonna speed it up to a three times normal speed. We've got an anonymous resident who's operating. There's the pupil size, pretty reasonable, especially with that viscomadriasis. Looks pretty good. So main incision being done now, let's take a look. And going in here, a little on the short side maybe, but not, not terrible, not a bad incision. All right, time for the rexus. Now small eye, hyperopic, the speculum is cranked. There's the viscoelastic loss. And look at that peak pupil. Here comes the iris. It's gonna pop out of the eye, you know it. Trying more viscoelastic. Going with the forceps, trying to start a rexus. There's the beginning of the rexus. And so far so good, but losing a lot of viscoelastic, but still with a reasonable pupil size. So continue that rexus, looking pretty good. And continuing pretty, I'll take this, it's not bad. Oh, running out a little bit there. So trying the little maneuver to bring it back and hopefully complete that rexus. Okay, hydrodissection now. Now the pupil's already a little bit peaked, so you be very careful here. So God knows what's happening right here with the movement of the microscope, but it's a resident surgery, so we roll with it. Now, all righty, there's the eye. Let's get this hydrodissection done, nice and gentle. There's the hydrodissection, it looks okay. Iris prolapse. Oh, you know this is not gonna be easy. Once you upset that iris, you're gonna be in a world of trouble. So there's the iris prolapsing out the incision, sweep it back in the eye. At this point, we're still okay, it's not terrible. As long as you have enough hydrodissection, you can still get that nucleus removal done. The pupil's still reasonable enough. You don't have to put in a pupil expansion device at this point. So let's get that phaco probe in the eye. Here comes the resident with a phaco probe, right hand going inside the eye. And let's slow it down here for a second. Ooh, why are you touching the iris? Don't touch the iris. That's a problem. You just made the iris really upset. You can't touch the iris like that because that's gonna cause more meiosis. That pupil's gonna constrict now. You are in a world of hurt. You shouldn't have touched the iris. So go inside the eye without touching the iris with the phaco probe. Use more viscoelastic if you need to. Push the iris back in position. But anytime you go in there and you touch that iris, oof, it's like this, look at that prolapse. This is gonna be a hot mess. You're gonna get a small pupil very soon now. It's already coming down, you can just feel it. This started off as basically a routine case, and now it's gonna be a punishment. But let's show you the whole case. We're gonna keep it at the three times speed to show you what's going on, so loosen up the speculum, I like that. Reposit the iris, release the pressure gradient, more viscoelastic on top of the tissues, I like that too. Now let's try again. A little more viscoelastic. Now the pupil's back to a reasonable size. Chopper goes in. Can we chop the nucleus just with a chopper and try break it into pieces? There you go. That's a help. Can we bring the nucleus up out of the capsule bag? Uh, not really. We tried, but it didn't really work. So let's go with the phaco probe. Phaco probe and the chopper. We need to get this nucleus out. Now, because this whole nucleus is behind the iris, it's causing even more issues. So as soon as we get the nucleus out of the eye, we'll likely resolve most of the iris prolapse issues. So let's get that cataract up, chop it into pieces, wolf it down. Now, good news here is you operate within that small central area of the pupil dilation. It's not much of a dilation. You're probably looking at a three and a half, maybe four millimeter pupil but you need to operate within that space to avoid touching the iris. Now, could you put in some iris hooks right now or a pupil expansion ring? Sure you can, you can do anything you want. It's not gonna be easy. So I think a better maneuver is doing what's happening here, which is still just get the nucleus out of the bag, get the nucleus up to the iris plane. Let's keep that tip occluded with nuclear material and let's just get this cataract gone. Let's just do this. Let's get out of this town. 
Take out the rest of that cataract. That's pretty good. Just some cortex left. Now we're talking. So now we can go inside there. You can see where that subincisional iris was touched. There's a little bit of bleeding at the pupil margin. That's not a big deal. We'll leave it alone. Here comes the IA, coaxial IA, and using the second instrument in the left hand, it looks like an iris, iris push-pull, in order to expose the lens cortex that is in the capsular bag and fully aspirate it. That looks pretty good. So now we'll inflate the capsular bag, really expand that open, make sure there's no lens material left inside the capsular bag. Here comes the lens, nice and easy, deliver that inside the bag, and that looks pretty good. Now you can see that's a six millimeter optic on that IOL, so the pupil's probably about three millimeters here. It's okay, it works out fine. But we learned an important lesson in this case. What is our take home lesson? That lesson is do not upset the iris. Don't touch the iris, especially now with the phaco probe. You touch the iris, that's what I call manual myocall. You're inducing pupillary constriction manually by touching the tissues. Never touch the iris. Plus, it goes without saying, if this patient was with topical anesthesia, the patient would feel everything when you touch the iris. The iris is not anesthetized with topical anesthesia. So with retrobulbar, it's okay. With topical, mm, not so much. So there's the end of the case. Viscoelastic has been removed. Here's the last bit of it. And the pupil looks tolerable. We're going to live with it. There's a little bit more iris prolapse. Let's get that AC flattened, release that pressure gradient, seal up this incision. And should you put a stitch in this eye? Does it need a suture? Oh, of course it does. Unless you want to see that iris prolapse on post-op day one. So grab the tissues here, nice and gentle, put that suture. And this has been a fun case. I trust that you've learned a lot from this case. And the take-home lesson is do not touch the iris. Don't upset it.